Robert Rennie, Chief Currency Strategist at Westpac, joins us now. So, Robert, thank you for, for joining us. So, we've seen the yen weakening uh, and the dollar to some extent today. What does it mean? Are investors encouraged by these pledges uh, to cut deficits? Yeah, look, I think uh, certainly the tone that we got over G20 certainly was given a bit of a boost by uh, the uh, Obama um, conference after the, uh, the end of G20. But you do get the sense that G20 at least um, got some agreement, some agreement that we are going to see um, lower deficits, whether you actually believe they will be achieved or not um, going forward remains to be seen. Uh, but I think that has certainly given a somewhat positive um, tone to uh, proceedings so far today. But I think we have to remember um, it's a fairly quiet period. Northern Hemisphere summer holiday. The World Cup still goes on, um, and I don't really believe there's there's an awful lot of uh, volume going through in the uh, the moves that we're seeing today. Right now, President Obama, we just referenced it there, has said that he expects the yuan to strengthen significantly. Meanwhile, you have the Chinese still warning, "Hey, this could affect our exporters." Uh, how do you see that situation playing out? Do you think we're going to actually see trade tensions uh, start to increase again? Look, I think there is a risk of that. You know, at face value, what China did ahead of the G20 um, was was certainly going to attract some uh, positive commentary out of the uh, the G20 process. And you would have been very disappointed um, if we hadn't seen some uh, at least backslapping um, from uh, from the other G20 leaders. But the one thing that concerns me, sitting fairly close to um, uh, the Asian region, we actually see some genuine signs of softening within the Chi within the Chinese data. Uh, we calculate a um, a weekly data pulse measure of uh, data within, uh, or momentum rather, within Chinese data, that has actually fallen to the lowest level that we've seen since uh, February of last year. If you look at the Chinese leading index and a six-month annualized change, again, we're down to some of the lowest levels that we've seen since February of last year. And if you look at measures of shipping activity, things like Baltic Dry um, and uh, Cape Size, again, you're seeing some genuine signs of weakness there. That, to me, reflects um, some signs that the uh, Chinese economy, the momentum momentum behind the Chinese economy is flagging, and I think that is going to be important for um, FX markets and asset markets um, as we move through the so Northern China, Hemisphere summer so, holidays. Okay, so China slows down. Do we then get a double dip in, in the rest of the world economy? Uh, well, look, that, that, that's a question that we're going to be asking ourselves more and more of. You look at the data that we had last week in, and in terms of U.S. housing, clear signs of weakening. You look at some of the European data, um, we're seeing clear signs of weakening. What we've got to remember is this call for uh, global fiscal uh, austerity is going to have a, uh, a negative impact on global growth as we move forward. And I think we're going to be asking that question an awful lot more in the weeks and months ahead. What about the U.S.? How do you feel about the recovery there? There are more concerns sort of creeping into the fore about a double dip there. Well, I think there's good reason for that. Again, you look at the housing data that we had last week, um, pretty disappointing. And it does tell you once you move out of that fiscal life support system that the U.S. housing um, has been living off, um, there is a risk of a dip. The one bright spot we think next, uh, later on this week, non-farm payrolls, we're actually forecasting 180,000 rise um, in, uh, in private payrolls. So I don't think it's going to be a straight line down. I think there's going to be some good news out there. But certainly we expect to see ongoing uh, weakening within the U.S. economy me after this, um, uh, this life support system um, starts to switch off. Very quickly, Robert, where do you expect the euro to go? Are we going to get another, uh, another sharp turn downward? I think there is a risk, Look, up to 124.50, 125, the kind of levels that we saw this time last week after China's announcement. I think if you get a push back up to that level, you want to use that as an opportunity to sell into strength. Got it. Robert Rennie, Chief Currency Strategist at Westpac. Thanks so much for joining us.